in this video let us talk about the next compound of nitrogen that is ammonia that is NH3 To talk about ammonia, let us first understand how is ammonia prepared. So for the lab preparation of ammonia, we take NH4Cl that is ammonium chloride and this ammonium chloride reacts with NaOH. On reaction with NaOH, this reaction is taken in presence of calcium oxide that is quicklime. What is the role of quicklime is what we will understand in a while. Let us understand the reaction first wherein we get NaCl with that we get NH3 and H2O here in this scenario ammonia is obtained but that ammonia is a bit moist we need to dry off this ammonia gas and to dry this ammonia gas we require something called as a drying agent ammonia as we know is already basic in nature so if we take a drying agent that is acidic it would easily react with the basic ammonia and form a different compound which means you will never get ammonia. You use the drying agent as calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is basic in nature. So it will not react with ammonia and it will be used only to dry off the ammonia gas. So here in this case, the role of calcium oxide is it is used as a drying agent. Going to the second method of preparation of ammonia, let us see how is it prepared commercially. So for the commercial method, we have something called as the Haber's process. So in the Haber's process, let us see what happens. The entire Haber process has three units. One is a unit one. Unit one is called as a compressor. It has two inlets, one for nitrogen and the other for hydrogen and they are taken in a ratio of 1 is to 3. The moment they are introduced in the compressor, they are compressed at a pressure of around 200 atmospheres. At that high pressure, some nitrogen and hydrogen, they react to form ammonia. This ammonia is now passed to unit 2. Unit 2 is called as a catalytic chamber. In the catalytic chamber, we have Fe2O3 present as a catalyst, it is preheated to somewhere around 720 Kelvin. Here, if the temperature is more than 720 Kelvin, the reaction might go in the backward direction as we have studied in the equilibrium. We want more ammonia, so we prefer an optimum temperature in that case. And the optimum temperature is somewhere around 720 to 780 Kelvin. So here, nitrogen and hydrogen once again combines in presence of a catalyst Fe2O3 and we have something called as a promoter. The promoter here is molybdenum. In this case, we get more ammonia. Whatever unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen is and the reacted ammonia now enters chamber C. Chamber C is called as a condenser wherein whosoever has a lower boiling point condenses first. So therefore, ammonia here condenses first and it is collected in a beaker. The unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen is once again passed to chamber A wherein again it will collide. In this case, we will get the maximum yield of ammonia here. This is how ammonia is obtained in the laboratory and this process is called as a Haber's process. Points to be remembered here are the pressure and the temperature condition. Pressure of around 200 atmospheres and the temperature of around 720 to 780 Kelvin with catalyst Fe2O3 and promoter that is molybdenum. So now let's talk about the reactions of ammonia and to start off with the reactions of ammonia, let us do it in a flow chart form wherein if I have ammonia, let us take this ammonia and let us react it with oxygen. When I react this ammonia with oxygen, I will be getting nitrogen and water molecule here. But let's suppose the same ammonia is reacted with oxygen. This time around in the presence of a catalyst like platinum, it will produce NO and H2O. This is called as the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. Likewise, if I take the same ammonia, let us try reacting this with chlorine 
and let us say that ammonia is in excess here. So if ammonia is in excess, the products form will be NH4Cl and nitrogen gas. Same reaction if it takes place in presence of chlorine, but this time around, chlorine is in excess. So the products form will be slightly different. The products form will be NH4Cl and with that we will be getting NCl3. Remember NCl3 is an explosive compound. Again, if I take ammonia, this ammonia is also used in the detection of ions. So if I take ammonia and if I react it with copper sulfate, it produces Cu NH3 four times SO4. This complex that is formed is called as a tetraamine copper sulfate. This tetraamine copper sulfate is inky blue in color or deep blue in color. It is used in the detection of ions. If I take a similar thing wherein I am reacting it with AgCl. So the same ammonia, if it reacts with AgCl, produces a complex here that is Ag. NH3 twice Cl. This complex is called as a diamine silver chloride and this diamine silver chloride produces a white colored precipitate. In both these cases, ammonia is acting as a ligand. Let's consider one more reaction. NH3 when it reacts with, on reaction with HCl, it produces NH4Cl it is formed with dense white fumes. So these are the reactions of ammonia. Talking about the structure of ammonia now, ammonia, if I talk about the structure, has a tetrahedral geometry, but the shape of it is pyramidal with a presence of a lone pair. So this is all about ammonia, the preparation, the reactions and the structures. For further more compounds, stay connected with Tutorac.